Olaf Berger, Industrials Analyst at Salem Private Investment, joining us now for a focus on logistics and also a focus on the construction space with the announcement of Roger Jardine stepping away from Avenge. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Olaf. So I'll start off with the Avenge story because Avenge, uh, as we know, accepted that 307 million rand fine. Roger uh, Jardine was uh, very instrumental in working with the competition through this very difficult time. And then, of course, uh, as a result of the announcement of the Competition Commission finds everyone is saying will heads roll as a result of this. Um, is there any speculation that he had something to do with what was uncovered, or is he, do you think, so stepping away because of the taxing nature um, of the Competition Commission process? Hi, Samantha. Um, that's very difficult to answer. Of course, he mentioned in his uh, announcement today that you're stepping away because of the taxing nature of the uh, of the process that he's undergone. However, keep in mind that he was employed pre the uncovering of these uncompetitive practices and he essentially inherited the problem but also was not employed with a, with a specific focus to deal with these issues. So he was employed as an operational and a, and a leader, um, then inherited the problem of the Competition Commission um, investigation and has subsequently stepped down after the finalization of the um, fines. Mm -hmm. And now we know what the fine is and he's choosing uh, to, to move on. Uh, we'll have him on business tonight tonight to get, uh, get some perspective uh, from the man himself. But uh, what are your thoughts on the company that he leaves behind uh, given uh, from the trading update? We saw that uh, earnings in fact are going to be down uh, whereas many analysts were expecting earnings to rise quite substantially at Avenge like other construction companies. It's tough to apportion blame, uh, well, the uh, poor res financial results. Um, he was obviously in charge of a company that did not perform according to expectations. They guided uh, high, um, essentially continually, and never managed to achieve those results. So I guess, to a certain extent, he has to accept responsibility for what's happened within his organization financially. And I think that could be one of the factors leading him to to resign from his current position. Um, of course, he did mention other factors. I, I, I would, however, not be, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't um, push factors which caused him to step down from his current post. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that uh, there are other companies, I mean, what are your thoughts then on the opportunities in the construction space right now and getting exposure to them? How would you rate Avenge relative to its peers if you're looking at uh, the investment case here? Avenge rates relatively well compared to the other peers within um, the construction space on a price to intrinsic value basis, which is the method we like to use when evaluating shares. We, however, have stayed clear of investing in Avenge um, because of the fear of, of major events happening. We weren't fully confident that um, to a certain extent management, but also to a certain extent because of the broad nature of their business, that they were fully um, in control of all the happenings. And we know that uh, construction is highly cyclical. We know that large contracts, if uh, they go wrong, can be highly costly. Um, so on that basis, we've, we've stuck out of Avenge. We've preferred um, Wilson Bailey Homes due to the consistent delivery of that particular firm, as well as um, Raubix, which is a concentrated road builder or focused road builder and has delivered uh, reasonably well after you know coming through the doldrums post the 2010 World Cup. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the logistics. And, uh, yeah. Wilson Bailey and Raubix remain our topics within that space. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the logistics space, Imperial coming out with their earnings and uh, the stock was slightly lower after being yesterday's top performer on the JSC. There's uh, two parts I suppose to the business. It's the growth areas. Africa, 6.5% of operating profits. Of course you've also got Europe right now where they're eyeing acquisitions and then locally in South Africa where they say it's a tough trading conditions. How would that all fit into your view on the uh, case uh, for getting exposure to Imperial? Well, broadly speaking, we favor Imperial from an investment perspective. Uh, we think the market views Imperial as a uh, distributor and dealer of, of cars, which is a cyclical business, and particularly the market views uh, Imperial as a distributor and a dealer of new cars. 
Um, there are, however, many, there's much more to, to Imperial than that. They um, play broadly in the vehicles um, value chain. They, um, of course, in the financial services side, re mainly relating to vehicles as well, as well as logistics. So we think the market's currently um, ascribing too low a valuation to Imperial. And uh, particularly on a relative basis, it looks attractive with the all share index trading on a historic PE multiple of more or less 18 times and industrial index uh, closer to 21 times. When you look at Imperial, that's at just over 11 times and possibly nearer to 10 times on a, on a forward looking basis, uh, that's forward PE. Um, it, looks, it looks reasonable. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are slightly concerned from a macro perspective given the slowdown in the consumer environment as well as. Uh, as the bank's lending, which is tightening, and of course, bank lending has a significant influence on uh, re on on car sales, vehicle sales. Given that 90% of vehicles in South Africa are bought on credit, um, that said, even when we do scenario analysis and we plug in reasonably um, tough, forward-looking assumptions into our models, the share um, comes up relatively attractively.